Good evening to everyone. My name is Joyce Thomas and I'm currently a student at UT Arlington. I would like to welcome you to my presentation on Servant Leader Theory Analysis. Firstly, let's take a look at the overview of the theory. The philosophy of servant leadership was introduced by Robert Greenleaf in 1970 after he read a book, The Journey to the East, written by Herman Hesse. This book describes a mythical journey by a group of people who were on a spiritual quest. It describes a character named Leo who is a servant leader. And in this story, he takes people and their work seriously. The servant leader feels that human beings have a value in their own right. The primary goal of the servant leader is to figure out the will of the group, to express it and further it. Greenleaf asserted that leadership grows out of service and that great leaders are servants first. The basic elements of servant leadership are caring, empathy, trust and focus on others. There are two kinds of leaders, those who are leaders first and those who are servants first. Leaders who are servants first will assume leadership only if they see it as the best way they can serve. The term servant leadership is a paradox. It's a combination of opposites, the servant who leads and the leader who serves. Let's take a look at the strengths of servant leadership. Servant leadership maximizes the potential of other individuals. The focus of the leader is to serve the cause and not just enhance their own positions. Their purpose is to help other people become freer, more autonomous, more capable and more effective. It begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first then conscious choice aspires one to lead. The difference manifests itself in care taken by the servant first to make sure that other people's highest priority needs are being served. Secondly, human face in an impersonal environment. Leaders need to have the skill of listening to, understanding and valuing others individuals or groups. Leaders need to be persuasive communicators and they need to provide constructive feedback. A degree of empathy is important because it helps leaders acknowledge the feelings and wishes of others. Nextly, it motivates the individual to perform better. Healthcare workers need to be continually empowered to improve everything they do. There must be shared expectation for continual learning and growth. People at all levels must be supported in problem solving and the servant leader does just that. Servant leaders are mentors. Employees are also included in decision making under a servant leader. The employees who undergo the mentoring are included in decision making, thereby enabling them to also be responsible for the decisions they make. Now let's take a look at the weaknesses of servant leadership. Firstly, it takes a long time to see results. Servant leaders may lead to demotivating the employees. The employees may make mistakes and the servant leader bails them out of the situation. However, some of these individuals may repeatedly keep making mistakes, expecting the leader to bail them out. Thereby, this process keeps going on and on and it takes a long time to see results. Secondly, some employees may not respond to this kind of leadership. The spirit of servant leadership will teach everyone to be kind, caring, respectful, even 
if people are not naturally that way. And since not everyone is naturally that way, which means not everyone is kind, caring, and respectful, it might lead, need a leader who is more dominant. Nextly, lack of authority. Servant leadership can minimize authority of the subject manager and the overall management function. When employees view their leader catering to their needs in an extreme manner, they are less likely to give them and view them as an authoritative figure. Servant leadership does not work in all situations. A manager needs to have some level of detachment from their employees so they can explore new opportunities, brainstorm ideas, resolve problems, and formulate a picture where the organization is headed. Lastly, it needs commitment from all employees to work. For a servant leader to see success in the organization, they need all the employees to work together to achieve the goal. Now, my perspective of a servant leader, number one, is a servant leader tries to bring out the best in each member. Because a servant leader is sensitive to what motivates others, they empower everyone to win with shared goals and visions. Secondly, followers become wiser, healthier, and more autonomous. That's because servant leaders believe and seek the intrinsic value people have beyond their tangible contribution as workers. Servant leaders are deeply committed to the growth of each and every individual in their organization. Thirdly, leaders showing they care and value their employees leads to happier employees who are interested in doing their best for their leader and as a result, the organization benefits. Now, let's take a look at the usefulness of servant leadership. Since employees have job satisfaction because the leader has done the best for them, they stay committed to working with the leader through thick and thin, and as a result, there is less staff turnover. Servant leaders value the employee, and as a result, the employees do their best, and, and as a result, they give them the best outcomes and results. Thirdly, it decreases stress on the manager since these managers delegate decision-making to others. Or in other terms, the managers who are servant leaders delegate decision-making to others. And when the employees make these decisions, they feel responsible for carrying them out, thereby decreasing the stress on the servant leader. Fourthly, the employees are made aware that the management cares. Now, my recommendation for servant leadership, I would recommend it because increasing employee job satisfaction will result in increased patient satisfaction. It would encourage more individuals to be nurses knowing that they are valued and they are given support by the management. To conclude, I would say effective leadership starts inside of a person with a servant's heart and then it moves outwards to serve others. And that's what servant leadership is all about. Thank you. Now, I would like to set aside five minutes for any questions in re relation to this presentation.